just wear a jacket for nothing. I put a tie on. Why, Wade? Because this is our Oscar show. This is our Oscar, Oscar nomination, nomination show. show. Classy. Yes. Classy. This morning, the Oscars were uh, nominations were announced at yes, uh, at, uh, at two thirty in the morning. Now, in were, you, a, were you up in, for that? You I, up for I, no, I used to get up for that, but since the invention of the internet, I uh, I don't waste my mornings on uh, nomination Tuesday anymore. I, wow. I, I do not blame you. Uh, Last year we went live at like seven a.m. That was it's, a it is always a train wreck. We really did that, didn't we? Yeah. You know what? It's <laughs> second show ever. We did. We went live at seven a.m. and we had a sound problem, so it's, I don't think it's up anymore. It's always a train wreck because it's always unrehearsed, and uh, everyone is still dead tired, and the no the Journalists don't want to be there, and nobody has their cameras working right, and it's just, it's all Because let's right. face it, the nominations are not going to change between 5.30 in the morning and when I no. wake up. They're going to be the same. Yeah, and honestly, it's not like anybody's phoning me to tell me that I was nominated, so what's the point? But you'd, <laughs> but, but you would wait in line for a, uh, for like an iPhone. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I Just read see the, where your priorities lie. I read the nominations on my iPhone, bleary-eyed, <laughs> at 7 in the morning. All right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying your yes. priorities. So here's the thing. Now, we're going to have an Oscar prediction show. Yes, we will. This is not that show. No. Because the, the, dynamics, the dynamics of what may win could change radically within the next few weeks. You know, even, with the, even with the nominations, movies sort of ebb and flow. They fall oh, yeah. in and out of favor. They peak. It's like, it's like a political campaign. I mean, honestly, you, you, th there are, there's going to be advertising and and there's going to be lobbying, and there's going to be uh, all of these things are going to be happening that could potentially impact what may or may not win. And so we won't really get a sense of that. Already, it's been a horse race. I got to tell you. I mean, just the, this has been the most interesting award season. Even if the films aren't as interesting, the award season so far has been more interesting than I think it's been in about a decade. Just because. The dynamic has changed already, even before today, so many times. Well, because, and we'll get into this when we yeah, talk about we Best Picture, but the whole social network versus King's Speech, oh gosh, which one is, race. it's a horse race. It is you this, know, it, it is this. It looked like a runaway for uh, social network, now it looks like King's Speech is back in there, got yep. 12 nominations, sure won the did. PGA Big Award. Yep. So uh, there's a lot probably, of stuff to talk probably about. Probably because you guys said it was Movie of the Year. Once you gave King's Speech Movie of the Year, sorry, take it off. That's right. Yes. I'm just saying. So as, as you can tell, right uh, Wade is prepared to talk about all sorts of stuff. Look at this. <laughs> Wade is prepared. What does this say? This is yellow. The rest are white. I don't want to know what this says. Yes. Wow. So here's what's going to happen. Everything has meaning. That doesn't look messy Everything at all. Everything has purpose. Mm -hmm. Everything has its place. Okay, whatever. Yes. I'll move this here. Uh, so what's going to happen now is <laughs> we're going to go down each nominee. We're going to each Wow. Each. So we're going to go down the major categories. We'll read them. We'll give you our thoughts, and then at the end, uh, we'll sort of wrap up what we think is going to happen. We'll give you a sense of how we think the next few weeks are going to go, yes. how the horse race will progress, and then in a few weeks, we'll, we're going to have an Oscar special. Is that not right? Yes, we will. And we'll... by the way, for the Oscar special, I will wear a tie. I'm already wearing right. a tie. tie. That got no applause. The idea of Mark. And we I, will. And I clean up very well, folks. It'll and, be worth it. And the Oscar prediction special, we will then beat Mark and Wade. We'll have a contest. You mean beat us like with sticks or no, something? How does that no. work? With pick, wet squash. Pick, pick better than you guys pick the winners. We will have the crowd, the audience, pick the winners. The problem with that is that if the audience wins, we have no credibility for the rest of the series. But they get a free gift. What do they get? I don't know. What kind of DVD we got lying around? I mean, we'll get a great DVD for you she guys. Said, you Shake said, the clown, folks. It's all you said, yours. You said they'd get a free gift? Yeah. Is there any gift that isn't free? Oh, yeah. The gift. What? Well, there's, I'm not going to get it. Oh, okay. look at that. Military <laughs> intelligence, jumbo shrimp. It's all, all coming right. together. Okay, so let's do the, the first category we want to talk about. Yes. Best Adapted Screenplay. Yes. Now, the nominees for Best Adapted Screenplay are 127 Hours, The Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. Yep. Now, the surprise here. Mm -hmm. I think is Winner's Bone, which is which it has emerged as that indie film Woo. that everybody sort of latches on to, like Little Miss Sunshine. This year, it's Winner's Bone, which it's, is a terrific film. Every year, there has been traditionally that film, occasionally a couple of them, but I don't think Winner's Bone is a real surprise here. Um, just because it was the indie film that sort of got all the love when it came out, it maintained that love, they did a very good job, a very good job pushing it all year long. Roadside platformed the hell out of that thing. From June all the way right into the awards season, they really, really got on, every, on everyone's radar. And uh, it, it's one of the best reviewed films of the year. I'm not at all surprised. It got a lot of love in the room when we had our voting. Uh, Lafka didn't give it any awards, but there was a lot of love in the room. It was, you know, came in third, fourth, whatever, in a lot of in a lot of cases. So I'm not surprised to see it here. What I am surprised to see is Toy Story 3, because I don't know what it's adapted from. 
<laughs> I guess. I but. guess. I mean, uh, uh, it's funny because Michael Michael Arndt, who uh, who wrote the screenplay, yeah, he's from Little Miss Sunshine. Correct. Very good writer. And he's a very good writer. So, and I think with True Grit, uh, it's funny with True Grit, and we'll we'll talk about this later. Mm -hmm. Is that True Grit? It people were wondering if that movie was going to save the Oscar season because nothing was really hitting at the time. Yeah. And then True Grit came out. And people it did liked surprisingly it. Surprisingly well. It, well, box office, it did great. It's the Coen yeah. Brothers' best film by far in terms yeah. of box office grosses. But it came out, and notices were a little lukewarm. It was good, but it wasn't going to save the year. Now you find yeah. yourself with True Grit nominated in a bunch of major categories, yeah. including uh, Best Adapted it's Screenplay. It's the second most nominated film. Ten yeah. nominations. I mean, two fewer than uh, The King's Speech. Which is very bizarre, because again. bizarre. I, I, I mean, I did not see that coming. I, I expected. I expected The King's Speech to be the, the most nominated film. I knew that uh, Inception and uh, The Social Network would both get in there with a bunch, that they would get eight or nine apiece, something like that. That's sort of what with, I was expecting. With and Inception, one, a, a lot of technical awards. A lot of technical awards for Inception, yeah, and then, you know, obviously major serious awards for, uh, for Social Network, but I did not see True Grit getting in there with ten. So that really surprised me. And then uh, the rest, uh, I get Social Network, which will, which will, uh, you know, I would imagine would walk away with it. Yeah. 127 Hours, I like that movie a lot. I know you weren't that happy didn't with like it. Didn't like it. Love Danny Boyle. Mm -hmm. Love, you know, Christian Coulson, the producer. Thrilled that he got nominated again because you know he only won the Oscar for Best Picture because he sat next to me at our dinner. You know that. Yeah, do you, that's what I'm saying. Do you love him because of that? And don't you know him? Aren't you friends with him? Or is that somebody else? No, we just sat next to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice guy. Do you like his work? Love his work. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, best adapted screenplay, uh, some, uh, a, a mild, couple mild surprises, but nothing. Yeah. I, I have to say, generally speaking, <clears throat> there were some snubs, because there always are. Yes. But I have to say, and maybe I should keep save this for the end, generally speaking, I'm quite happy with this uh, I'm with quite happy. And, and the last thing I'll say about, about screenplay, uh, something that has become really interesting in recent years, well, it, the way it used to be, is that everybody always wanted to see <clears throat> how the directing nominees would measure up against the Best Picture nominees, because there's always a discrepancy. And we should, and we should actually explain this. The, it, people are always like, how could this person get snubbed? How is Ryan Gosling not nominated for Best Actor? Oh my gosh. Here's the way that it works. Um, in most of the categories, branches nominate within branches. Okay, So the actor's branch nominates actors. Directors don't get to nominate actors. Actors don't get to nominate directors. Directors nominate directors. Cinematographers nominate cinematographers. Art directors nominate art directors, and so forth and so on. Everyone nominates Best Picture. So you wind up with these discrepancies that tell you more about the sensibilities of the branches and how they feel about other branches. And then, when everything is nominated, the entire Academy votes for everything. So it, the, the dynamics of nomination versus win is always very, very interesting. Um, it used to be that there was always one difference between the directors and picture. You know, somebody that the directors loved that everybody else wasn't so keen on, and a film the directors weren't so keen on. Now that we have ten nominees starting last year, there's an interesting thing going on with the writing categories. Last year, ten nominees for the first time in whatever it was, 50, 60 years, and half of them were adapted, the other half were original. And they corresponded perfectly to all ten nominees in the two writing categories. This year, half of them are adapted, half of them are original, and they correspond perfectly with one exception, which is in our next category. Uh, the, you know, there, there was a lot of math in that with the halves and yes. the ones. I didn't know what that was. That's a good transition. But anyway, <laughs> all, of the, all of the adapted screenplays that we just mentioned, all five of them nominated for Best Picture. Okay, so Wade, let's move on yes. to Original Screenplay. Tell yes. us about that one. Who's nominated? Original Screenplay nominations are Another Year, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are All Right, and The King's Speech. Now we uh, we've talked about. Now I'm I'm a huge Mike, Mike Lee fan. Yeah. And anything Mike Lee Mike gets Lee. nominated for is fine by me. But he has a very specific way of writing his scripts. That uh, yet for some reason he keeps getting nominated and winning awards for writing. But he doesn't because really write his scripts. Process. He, he writes a script and then he workshops it with the actors. For and then months. He rewrites it for months and they contribute. And he's you know it's sort of. Uh, and yet he takes a nomination. The nominate and the it's nomination. His idea. Huh? It was his idea. He, but he didn't write. And by the way, one of the bigger snubs of the year, which uh, we know, I'm going to well, write this, this down. This is it. No. This is it. That what? film got in there. All four of the other films: The Fighter, Inception, Kids Are All Right, um, and The King's Speech. All four of those nominated for Best Picture. Another year, not nominated. The Best Picture nominee that is not here: Black Swan. That is true. That Black is true. Black Swan. I have to say that uh, I am surprised. The writers didn't like Black Swan. Huh? Writers didn't like Black Swan. They did not, but they—they. They, it's funny. They—they they love the kids are all right. 
I yeah. feel that movie's overpraised. Can I, I say that right it. now? I love it. I feel that's one of those like weird, creepy liberal movies that everyone feels I love proud it. of themselves. Or there's two women who love kids, and eh, it's like it's all just self-congratulatory liberal stuff. I, I hate that stuff, and I'm a liberal. I don't you like know, it. You know what? You know what? It's it's a well-written film with well-defined characters. Oh, I run an organic restaurant. Oh, I listen to NPR. Come on. I just hate those types of movies. I really do. What? Look, look. Here's something else. Deborah Granick, Winner's right. Bone. And Lisa Chilodanko, kids are all right. Two like women filmmakers who've been at it for a long time, really digging in the trenches, having a hard time getting their movies financed. They have to make their movies for no money. Nobody got paid on either of these movies. They were the little movies nobody had any faith in. And they're both nominated for Best Picture and for Best Screenplay. Give them some love. All right, and I Lisa Chilodanko. And you know what? Uh, the Come fighter, on. the fighter, I didn't like either. King Speech. Let's face it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Although Inception, it's funny because I, I I think for Inception the nomination is the award because yeah because they, they they gave it to him just by virtue of being able to figure it out or or just being so confused that you just figure how, I don't know however you wrote it I don't understand it but it must be worth something <laughs> it must be brilliant it must be brilliant because I don't get it <laughs> exactly I, I'm still puzzled so uh, original screenplay is yeah. uh, again not a whole lot of surprises there but um, if we go to the next one foreign language film. No way. Tell us about those. Ah, uh, yes. Best foreign language film of the year. Beautiful. B-I-U-T-I-F-U-L. From Mexico. Dogtooth from Greece. In a Better World from Denmark. Incendie from uh, Canada. And Outside the Law, otherwise known as Hors la Loi, from Algeria. Uh, this is an interesting category. It's a very interesting I, I th category. I think that the... Uh, on, at first blush, you would assume people would go for Beautiful because it stars a, a big uh, you know international what? handsome superstar well, who's also nominated. Here's the thing. The, the foreign language category and the best documentary categories, uh, have those have the most unusual nominating and voting procedures. They're nominated not by their branches because there are no branches for those. They're nominated basically by committee. And the procedures for the foreign language film uh, category have changed over the years because Mark Johnson, the producer, producer of the, uh, the well, many great films, including Rain Man, who heads the committee, has changed those procedures to try and make it so that the geriatric component of that committee doesn't so heavily influence the nominees. Because in order to nominate here, they've got a, a, you know about what, 60, 70, 80 members of that committee, and the only way you can sit around and see 70 or 80 internet, you know, foreign films every year is if you're retired. So you've got old people nominating these movies. So he introduced kind of a, a double-tiered process where there's a committee that hands it off to another committee, and it's giving us some edgier nominations. Well, I'll tell you, when it comes to edgy, there is nothing edgier than Dogtooth. Uh, it, I don't know this, how that got it. I mean, it won, it won, it won uh, the, uh, the uh, certain regards section at Cannes this last year. But it's just, I don't, you know, it is really. A twi if you want to go rent a movie that is completely twisted, a Dogtooth, I mean, I don't want to explain it, it is, it, uh, it, is an, it is almost evil. This beautiful. Movie. It'll never win. Beautiful has a good shot. People love Inuritu. Look, he, I mean, he's directed some great films. Uh, you know, Babel was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, you know, he, actors love him. So y you have to see all five films in a theater. You have to see all five projected in order to vote in this, fa in this category. They're really militant about that. And a lot of people don't like going and making the effort to make sure that your name is checked off by the Academy door watcher, you know. To, to say this person saw this film, and they will reject. They will those those accountants will go through and they will reject every ballot that's not someone who has officially seen all five of these projected. So that's what's going to make it interesting. Uh, Or la loi with, uh, by Rashid Bouchareb, who's basically a French filmmaker. I mean, he's Algerian French. The movie is officially an Algerian entry, but it's basically a French film. Uh, his films are mostly about you know, the, the Arabic uh, colonial experience under French colonialism. He did the, uh, the previously did a film called Andigen about, it's kind of like glory during World War II, except, you know, North African Arabic fighters fighting for the French in World War II. This is a very, very good film. I don't know that it's going to win. It's really competent. I'm thrilled that Denis Villeneuve got in there for uh, Maelstrom, uh, for, no, for uh, Ensendie. He previously did a film called Maelstrom. Great film. And, uh, you know, uh, Suzanne Beer did After the Wedding, got a nomination. She could win for In a Better World. So any of these could win except for Dog Tooth. Well, I, I think that it's probably either Beautiful or In a Better World because the director of In a Better World is very well regarded. Very well regarded. But, you know, so she, she's well regarded and Yuritu is well regarded, but uh, you just never know. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Well, the one thing I think we do know is Best Animated Film. Yes. Which is uh, down to three. How to Train Your Dragon, Toy Story 3, and The Illusionist. Now, people are going to ask, why only three? 
Here's why only three. There's a weird calculus that they use in this category, and I think also in the song category, yes. whereby uh, you have to get X number of votes to even get the nomination. It's kind of screwy, and that's why Tangled probably didn't get in there. They, they, if you don't get X number of votes, you don't even get a nomination. So they, apparently a lot of these films didn't get enough nominations to make for five, so we get the top three. I mean, you know, the, the nominations have changed over the years. There are music categories that didn't, that didn't exist and then existed yeah. again over the years. Um, yes. Now, animated film, of course, is, is, uh, is crucial nowadays, especially mm -hmm. to the studio bottom lines. And, of course, the question is always going to be, when will an animated film win Best Picture? Uh, obviously, not, uh, it's not going to happen this year. No. But here, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine it not being Toy Story 3. I'm very happy that The Illusionist got nominated. That's a terrific, it's a terrific film. And uh, I, you know what? I liked How to Train Your Dragon as well. I did. I liked that film a lot. Yeah. I was surprised. So those are the three. How to Train Your Dragon, The Illusionist, and Toy Story 3. Yeah, this one I think is going to be a Toy Story 3. Uh, now, we, as we start getting into uh, some of the bigger categories, uh, we'll start getting into some of the more notable snubs. Yes. Because we have next Best Supporting Actress. Ah. Wade. Our nominees for Best Supporting Actress are Amy Adams, Helena Bonham Carter, Melissa Leo, Haley Steinfeld and Jackie Weaver. Yes, go Jackie. If Keep Jackie, my streak alive. If Jackie wins, you will be, you will be legend within the LA Film Critics Association. <laughs> Sit next to Wade, you win an Oscar, five years running. Is it five That's years it. running? Uh, yeah, that would be five years running. That's fantastic. Wait, we five, that would be five years Can and I go back people. to a question on animated? No. Yeah. Jamie Foxx, who's in here but not Mike, has a question, a good question, that other people have asked also on Facebook okay. and on Twitter. Um, do you think it's fair animated film can be both nominated for Best Picture and b Best Animated Film? But that, that a live action film cannot be nominated for Best Animated Film? I do think that's unfair. Well, that, yeah, well no. not that, but no, there's two I, separate categories. I, I personally don't think that there should be a Best Animated Film category. And a lot of animators don't feel that way either. They feel like a movie is a movie right, is a movie. Exactly. And a narrative film is a narrative film. And if it's, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. And uh, that, what, that's sort of... But what brought that on is Pixar. Because only until yes. Pixar really... Got, it got itself going, was an animated film even mentioned in the same breath as a possible Best Picture nominee? Yeah. You know? Well, Beauty I mean, what, The Beauty Rescuers the Down Under? Is that going to be nominated for Best Picture? Well, no. Beauty and the Beast was the first one. Beauty and the Beast was the first one, and there was no category for animated film, but it got in as one of the five. And let's be honest, uh, Toy Story 3 would not make a top five. If we didn't have ten nominees here, it wouldn't be in there. It just wouldn't. <coughs> I don't know. So, I, I guarantee no. you a dragon and an illusionist wouldn't. No. But Toy Story 3 But I, I, I think... It's like it's wasting a spot. I because agree. Because you know that it's going to win Best Animated Film. So yeah. why, why throw Toy Story 3 as in the 10? Like we did last year. Uh, you foreign know, film can be a foreign picture. film can be best picture. That's true. Although there are different different qualification criteria for for to get in the foreign language category versus um, best picture. But it's possible if the release schedules like coincide, if the windows coincide. It's, it's, it's really not that clean. But the thing with, it's funny because the thing with with animated feature is if you're a studio, yeah. you know you don't want you want to keep the separate category for animated film. Sure you do. Because if you're How to Train Your Dragon, which yeah. would never be nominated for Best Picture, and is not going to win animated feature film, yeah. at least you know you're going to make some extra coin on DVD, yeah. right? Because you can say you're nominated for an Oscar. Absolutely true. All right, now here's the thing with Best Supporting Actress. This is, uh, uh, this is the one uh, category that I feel uh, is my personal biggest snub. Really? Yes. Who's missing? Uh, you could say that she belongs in Best Actress, but Leslie Manville, oh, well, from Another yeah. Year, was just fantastic. Of course she was. Uh, she was great. But and the fact that she got... Uh, but who would you pull out there? Amy Adams. Okay. I, you know, I felt that was just another Amy Adams performance. She, it uh, was. she has an accent and she th slings beers. I mean, what does she really but, do? But remember, She's terrific. I mean, there's nothing wrong with her. But, remember, but give her an Oscar? It, Oscars are, are more popularity contests than anything else, especially when you get into the acting category. It's like high school. There are more actors in the Academy than any other occupation. Which is why Crash because, won that year. Well, be, yes, because they have four categories that represent them. So you have four ways of getting into the Academy four times as many ways as anybody else. So, so you have, you have this four huge ways, acting branch. Does that mean that I can get in as best actor and best actress if I can pull it off? I think you and could. Can I get into the acting and actress branch? Is I there, is there an could. actress branch of the Academy? <laughs> For you, we'll make one. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. Amy Adams, I don't get it. Okay. H Helena Bottom Carter, you know, although I admit that she took a nothing role and made it into kind of something, uh, I, I'm not like in love with it. 
Are you in love with that one? I, I do love her performance. I really think. I think it's very nuanced. I don't think the film is is as strong without her. I think it needs her. It needs the fe it needs her female grounding because it is otherwise a movie about a couple of men, you know, and this remarkable friendship, but also this very contentious friendship. I think it needs her presence in the film. Also, it needs to be there because Queen Elizabeth would be very upset if. She were only ever, you know, if, if, I mean, look, she's been portrayed personally on screen. Her dad is portrayed. <clears throat> Both got Oscar nominations. You know, it, it needs to be that an actress wins for playing her, an actor wins for playing her dad, and then an actress wins for playing her mom. These are not the BAFTAs. I'm sorry. All right. All right, so uh, Melissa Leo was over the top. I didn't like her. Um, but she's got to be considered one of the front runners because people like her. I know. Uh, Haley Stein felt I'm very happy she got nominated. She's but just terrific. She's really, 13 years old. Really? And she's 13 years her, old. Her first film. Her first film up against Jeff Bridges in half the movie, and she's fantastic. But she's basically the lead actor. She, that, that's a lead. Well, sure, but you know what? Uh, that's a lead. And Jeffrey is. Rush is, should be a co lead as well. But they were put up for supporting because it's, it's, it's easier to get them nominated. That's the thing, too, you know, uh, which we maybe should explain yeah. how uh, people are placed within the category. The studio submits the names and designates where it wants them to be considered. Right. So yes. some people may think Haley uh, Steinfeld should have been actress. Couldn't have been because. I think best documentary, she should have been nominated decided. for that. Huh? Paramount decided she's a supporting role. Right. Yeah. Because uh, they they look at, at the uh, the possible competition, the yeah. best chance she has to win. Go, Jackie. Just and work then it. Then there's Jackie Just Weaver. <laughs> You're out of your mind. Yes. Okay, so next you have Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. Uh, here we have uh, Christian Bale, John Hawks, Jeremy Renner, Mark uh, Ruffalo, and Jeffrey Rush. Yep. Now, the surprise here, obviously, is uh, John Hawks, and a very pleasant surprise. I think it's wonderful. It's not a huge surprise, and again, during our voting, you know, you, you got a sense that people really had caught that wave. His name came up a lot, and people were not ignoring him. Winter's Bone kind of was riding a tide. You know, it was, uh, it was down there simmering. And uh, so I think his name was on everybody's lips, even if out there in the media it wasn't, he wasn't sort of being touted as a front runner or even a, a consideration. He was his name was in the mix. I mean, he's so good that he makes the movie. You just assume that they just they they, but, they flew to the location and found that guy and just cast him. But also because when you first meet him, you hate him, and the hardest thing for an actor to do is to play a part wherein you hate them when you meet them, and by the end of the movie, you love them. And uh, that's a you know a lot of performances have gotten nominated for doing that over the years, and he's one of them, and he does it brilliantly, and uh, it, it makes the movie, it gives the movie soul, and I'm thrilled that he's there. Uh, Christian Bale, I thought was horrible. It was just unbelievable overacting, and I love Christian Bale, but that was just dreadful. I I, I agree. I you know what I agree with that. Uh, Jeremy Renner, I don't get that either. I you think know, you know he, what, Jeremy Renner, you know what this is? This is... Uh, we, we, we like you, you're, you're in the club. This is, you know what, this is residue still left over from last year. This is Hurt Locker residue. It's like, oh my gosh, he was in some obscurity for so many years and we nominated him last year. Let's do it again. Yeah, I, I, I don't get that one. I don't get That's that one at all. Is. And uh, Mark Ruff, uh, Ruffalo is the organic food idiot from that movie that I don't like. <laughs> you know what, look, it's hey, 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 hey. He's a punching bag in that movie. Mm -hmm. He gets beat up by lesbians. Well, Give we're beating him up props. now. At least I'm beating him up. I don't like him. Okay. Jeffrey Rush, I ate up every second of that guy. That was a great, great Genius. character. I loved it. I Genius. loved it. It's just great. Give, give him every award here, including uh, uh, It's a flawless score. performance. Huh? It's flawless. It really is. I loved flawless. it. Flawless. If, if he doesn't win, um, come on. Oh, obviously, it's a horse race between him and Christian Bale. Yeah, Bale, it's I, just, I just I think it, I, Here's the thing. I think, too, that um, I think a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the voters will assume that Bale will give a performance like this again. He's still young. Sure, sure. He's been good in the past. He's he'll be good in the future. Yeah. You know, I think that that yeah. he's got his time that's still yeah. coming up. Whereas Jeffrey <clears throat> Rush has had a great career. He's obviously had uh, award-winning success in the past. He has. But but you know what? I still think that they should give it to him. He's so good in it. Well, Come on. we'll see. We'll see. Let's see what the what the SAG awards bring. Jeremy Renner. I like Jeremy Renner. He's a good man. He's, he's, a, he's a, a nice guy and a fine dancer. I'm just saying that. Okay. Uh, I don't know why he's nominated. All right, so uh, what's next, Wade? Best Actress, go. Best Actress. All right, we've got Annette Bening. The wrong performance, but I'm okay with it because I love her. Uh, Nicole Kidman, Jennifer Lawrence, Natalie Portman, and Michelle Williams. All right, that's a, that's a fetching bunch, isn't it? It is a fetching bunch. You know, I'm, although it seems obvious, I'm actually glad that Nicole Kidman... Uh, was nominated for Rabbit Hole because that is a good movie. That's a great film. And, and it's been overlooked in so many other areas, and I just don't know that they really got it out there. But 
It's um, also not because it's it's not the type of film and not the type of performance you think it is. No. It's not histrionics and crying and no, screaming all over the screen. It's not like that. It's it's no. nuanced and it's layered and it's really I think one of the best things she's ever done. Now she's won an Oscar, so she's not you know necessarily considered the front runner there. And that Benning has never. She's the veteran here, so you got to look at her as kind of the front runner at this point. But I'm just thrilled with Jennifer Lawrence. I mean that girl. It's it's like Haley Steinfeld. She carries the movie, and they're very similar in many respects, if you think about it. Two movies about young girls, burdened, you know, one has to find her dad, the other one has to avenge her dad, and they both have some gruff guy that they've got to sort of rely on, you know. I mean, there, there are similar veins in both of those films, but those two actresses are just profound in the way that they, they carry it. They're not, they're not sweet, young, innocent, little, uh, put-upon things. I mean, they're strong women, and they're strong women... At a, at a time when you wouldn't expect them to be strong. And I think uh, it's just, it's great to see her here. And it's funny, too, because with Jennifer Lawrence, just yeah. uh, continuing the comparison, with Jennifer Lawrence, you have a character who's just sort of, it's all so interior with her. Yeah. You know, she's, she's sort of always looking and, and, oh, and brooding. And, but with Haley Steinfeld, she's got a lot of dialogue. A lot of moxie, too. A lot of moxie, a lot of dialogue a that she's got to sell. that girl. And both are very, and both are difficult to sell. You know, it's, it's, you know, We've had this conversation before about how people think, uh, and, and bad actors think, mm -hmm. that acting is dialogue. Yes. Well, the more dialogue you have, the more you're giving a performance. But, but look I, at Jennifer Lawrence. But as I said in my intro for Jackie Weaver at our awards, acting is not about what you're saying, it's about what you're thinking. And that's what you see in her performance. Oh, don't get all smart and theorist. He's such a theorist. <laughs> Lame. So, uh, he, obviously, uh, the front runner is, it's, it's, it's a combination between, do we give it to Annette Benning because she doesn't work that often and we love her, or is it just Natalie Portman running away with it? it, it it's, that's really the, the race. Uh, so, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but you know what? I, it's, it's, a very, it's a very strong, uh, it's a very strong um, uh, it's uh, crop. It's a really strong field. Michelle Williams doesn't have a shot, but uh, it's nice to see her there because people do take her seriously, and it's a good performance. Uh, okay, let's move on to uh, Best Actor. Oh, Wade, yes. What's going on there? Best Actor, we have Javier Badem, Jeff Bridges, Jesse Eisenberg, Colin Firth, and James Franco. A lot of guys whose names begin with J. So, yeah. but Javier yeah. Hef, Hesse, says, and Hefe. Says J Mac. And him, so, but, him. but uh, yes, before we just go ahead and crown this uh, the Colin Firth show, let me just say <laughs> I am very glad that Jesse Eisenberg is nominated. Because I'm telling you, you put Michael Sarah in that film, or you put some other kid in that film, the film doesn't work. Jesse Eisenberg. Shia LaBeouf? You put Shia, oh my <laughs> God, you put Shia LaBeouf in that film. Can you imagine how dreadful that movie would be if Shia LaBeouf yeah, was in that film? Yeah, well, I mean, seriously, everything I, don't is, like, everything I don't like about Jesse Eisenberg was perfect to play right. this character. But was that acting, or was that just him being himself? It's, you know, look. Is look, it just good casting? It's, look. Casting is 90% of it. You know yes. what I mean? Because like, if you get the right person, it's really but, up to the director to get true. the performance he wants out of you. So if you pick Eisenberg, the right guy, he can get it out. Eisenberg is good, but honestly, is he ever going to be nominated again for anything? Not, well, I mean, I assume not. You Probably know, whatever. not. Who knows? I mean, do you see Jesse Eisenberg playing... I don't know. Uh, you know Lincoln. King, King, Lincoln. He's going to play Lincoln in 20 Lincoln? years. The young <laughs> Lincoln. The not, young Lincoln starring Jesse Eisenberg. It's not going to happen. <laughs> He's young um, Lincoln. Bardem, uh, Bardem is extraordinary. He already won the award at the Cannes Film Festival. Not going to happen. Uh, Jeff Bridges won last year. Just nice to be nominated again. But I think this is the first time, I could be wrong about this, if any of our, our, our viewers or listeners are, are wonky enough to go check this up, I think this is the first time two actors have been uh, nominated for Best Actor for playing the exact same role in films based on the exact same book and story. Could be. Could be. I think, because you remember Rooster John Wayne won this in 1968. Two, right, two actors have played Rooster Cogburn, or at least yep, two. Yep. Uh, John Wayne won his only Oscar for it. Yep, Jeff for Bridges role. is nominated. I think, th I think this may be the, the first time that that has ever happened. I could be wrong, but I think. Uh, Eisenberg, Colin Firth, Franco, Franco's whatever, you know. Um, I, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm starting to uh, uh, change my opinion of James Franco. First, I hated him, and now I'm turning. But we love turning, the ape, don't we? we do love As the a ape. director, he is we extraordinary. Go okay. rent the ape. Okay, the it's the a magnificent ape. director. Buy the ape. Oh yes. Um, oh, you oh. will. Oh, will you? Oh, yes, you will. I still, I still say he's only known for Freaks and Geeks. Now, That's all you need to know. Yes, Good exactly. Point. He's a nominated lot. for an a best <laughs> best actor Oscar. He's only known for Freaks and Geeks. Freaks and Geeks. Oh, and a lot of people have said, like this morning, I was I was talking on KPCC about this, and people were like, "Why isn't Ryan Gosling nominated?" Stop. I'm making a point here, and it's not the one on your head. The, 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 uh, oh, 
did I say that? <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Wow, bam. It seems like one of those things he's always thought about. Yeah. And he's like, oh my God, like, I can't save, believe I just said that. Save it, face. save it, save it in my back pocket. <laughs> Ryan Gosling, why isn't he nominated? Because somebody had to come in sixth, right? I guess. I mean, you know, sure. these are, this is what it comes to with snubs. It's like, oh my gosh, how can they snub this person? Well, somebody came in sixth. And you, but maybe it was him, maybe it wasn't. We don't maybe. know. We'll never or know. Or seventh. That's true. Do you feel he belonged to be? He belonged higher up. No. Okay. Not really. Well, maybe better. I'm looking for I, snubs. I'm looking I, for I controversy. Liked, I liked him better than Franco, but 127 hours got more attention. I don't think enough people saw Blue Valentine. So so far, have you agreed? But, but, but look, so far you're agreeing with most of these lists. Yeah, pretty well, much. It, it, I it, think they're it, the ones that I expected. We not need, the ones we need I a wanted. host that can fight. We need some. We need like well, this is BS and throw it. And well, it's like we were. It's like we were saying earlier. I think that this list, uh, uh, all things being equal, is very uh, is very fair. I mean, I, I don't it's, see a lot of. I don't see a lot of. We'll get to it in a second, but I don't see a lot of egregious. Oh my God, snubs. Yeah, we'll get to that, that. Changes the academy. It's there, like there's it's one like, that, according to Twitter, was a huge mistake. But we'll get to that one. Yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, but look, Franco had to carry that movie by himself. Yeah. There was nobody else in that movie. It was him and uh, those girls who show up for ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he carries the movie. You know, you, you, you can't buy that. Uh, he cuts his arm off. Big deal. <laughs> who hasn't? I All right, know. so uh, next we'll talk about Best Director. Wade, who are the Best Director nominees? Our Best Director nominees are Darren Aronofsky, David O. Russell, Tom Hooper, David Fincher, and Joel and Ethan Cohen. Doesn't, doesn't Tom Hooper in that shot mm -hmm. of him, doesn't he, he look like he's starring in some like, 80s sitcom like My Two Dads or something? You know, like, <laughs> he, looks, he looks like he's starring in some kind it's of... Like, he, like Tom Hooper and Bronson Pinchot right there, <laughs> My Two Dads. That's the shot. And da then, David O. Russell, go back to that, go back to that, because David O. Russell in that picture, doesn't he look like he's yelling at Lily Tomlin? Oh. 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 Sorry. I'll tell you, this movie has... Res the Fighter <laughs> resurrected that guy's career. It did. And you know, when, when I saw the screening of The Fighter, Nobody was all that impressed. It was no, more like, who's kind of like it's, True Grit? It, it, it's, Good, but not, oh my God. But see, that's how I feel about the whole year. I feel that same way about The Social Network. And I know some people feel that way about The, about the King's Speech, even though I don't. It is, which, you know, they're good, they're fine, but there's no greatness here. I think The Fighter and True Grit both kind of carried the same wave, which is, oh my gosh, major studio films that aren't made for teenagers, that don't have shootouts and explosions, that aren't incredibly intolerable, that just, like, they're good enough. Wow, when was the last time? I think it's almost more a reaction to how horrible we expect studio films to be, and thank God they finally made one that isn't terrible. Let's nominate it and hope that they'll do it again. I mean, I really feel like that's sort of what carried those two films. And people want to validate the studios and say, you know, if you do more films like this, just don't screw it up and don't make it for teenagers. Make a film for adults. We'll, we'll give you some nominations. The Fighter is not a bad film, but it's not a particularly good film. It's just fine. It's adequate. I agree. It's totally adequate. Let's get to the what, the first thing that anybody on Twitter, which was, Chris Nolan didn't get a director nomination. Are you kidding? It was a lot of a lot of those. Which yeah. that was actually Felicia Day's tweet. Okay. And then, uh, then a thousand other fan yeah. boys and girls for Chris Nolan, and uh, and a lot of them on our Facebook agreed he okay. should not have. And what's your take on why isn't he here and Inception and all that? Somebody had to come in sixth. You know, I mean, do you do you feel like he belongs? I, no, I don't. I don't That's feel like I'm he asking. belongs because because I mean, look, I don't think David O. Russell belongs either. Because but the fighter is very competent, and it's a more it's a more mature film than Inception. You know, the fighter at least tries to tell a story about characters and so forth and so on. Inception is a, is a roller coaster ride. It's a thrill ride, and what doesn't work in Inception is the is the human stuff, the the emotional stuff, the relationship with his wife. It never rings true. The only way the movie works is as just a straight-up, you know, thrill ride. And directing is not about directing camera work and special effects and editing and whiz-bang and giving people a thrill. Directing is about directing actors. Right. And if you can get an emotional reaction, if you can make actors, if you can take words on a page and put them in the mouths of actors and make them make you believe that they're three-dimensional, honest-to-God, real human beings who give you an emotional reaction, that's directing. Inception doesn't have that. Well, uh, on our Facebook page, Eric, Eric Gallant, Oliver Perkoff, Kristen Hansen, Cassie Robinson, and a bunch more said, cannot believe that Chris Nolan was not nominated. And also, Eric well, Gallant brings up, why not Ben Affleck for the town? Because You know what? Somebody had to come in seven. 
<laughs> you know Not what? the answer we're looking for. I we're looking know. for your opinion. I, I think ben, I think the town was better shot than it, than it was directed. Yeah, the, the town know? the town is is fine. It's okay. It's not. But great. you want to give him best director? No. You know, I mean, th there's who a are you going to pull out here? Who are you going to pull out? Well, here? I would. Well, first of all, I would pull out David Russell. You can forget that. Okay, fine. But the actors love that movie because it's an actory movie. I get that. Okay. But I don't even know that Nolan would take that slot because again, Inception is a technical achievement. That's different. That's art direction. Yeah. And that's all. That's sort of, that's different than saying uh, it's a directing achievement. Absolutely. Now, Black Swan, I don't care for, but it's a director's movie. It is a movie that is totally held together by the director's just sheer will to make all these components work, and he got some great performances in it. I mean, really good performances. It's the best thing Natalie Portman's ever done. So, I give him props. I didn't like the film, but it, it at least fits the, the measure. King's Speech and the Social Network. Now, the Social you know, Network, fine. here's the thing. The Social Network is not a director's showcase. It's a writing showcase. But people love Fincher. But people love Fincher. And they feel yeah. as if, you know, they, they kind of wanted to give it to him with Benjamin Button, yeah. but they just couldn't like the film enough. Yeah, I agree. But I agree. here with Social Network, it's obviously riding an incredible wave that I think this is going to wind up being Fincher's year. But uh, but but I think all these are, all of these except for Aronofsky, I think all of these you can actually make cases for and against. Yes, you know. But I the agree. thing is that Nolan is so popular with a certain uh, fan base, and people felt that he was so uh, disrespected with uh, Batman. Yeah. In fact, in fact, the, the look the failure of Batman to get the nominations that the fanboys wanted led to there being ten best picture but, nominations. But remember the the, the other the other. Mark against Nolan is that he's a fanboy filmmaker, right? It is that he only makes movies that have a certain Comic-Con appeal, that he sort of elevated the Comic-Con average film a notch or two, and that now he's making mature films for fanboys. Well, when Nolan makes a movie that's not, you know, comic book based, science fiction based, genre based, if he makes a movie that's just about people, Maybe he'll get a nomination. Well, but right look, now it's perceived that he makes movies for teenagers more than he makes movies for adults. Well, look, it's, it's like, would you have given him a Best Director nomination for Insomnia? No. no. I mean, no. I like Insomnia a lot, actually. It's kind of an overlooked film. Yeah. Would you give it to him for uh, Memento? Perhaps. You know, that more Perhaps. than, really, that more than anything. Perhaps, yeah. Because yeah. that, that was a movie that he, he co-wrote it. He uh -huh. made that thing work. That and, was a comp and, and made it for next to no money. Right. Yeah. I, perhaps. So I don't know that, uh, I mean, you can make a case for it. I, I really, I, th I think all these people you can make a case for against, really, except for Aronofsky, who I think he's not going to win. But, you know, I, I hey, think look, he's pretty true, impeachable on this list. But grit, I understand why no one would get True is just a lot of love for the Coens. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. But, that, but again, that's another, that's a, 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 we, we talked earlier about how when, when True Grit came out, it was going to save the movie going year. It didn't, yeah. and yet somehow it winds up with 10 nominations. Personally, I think the True Grit slot is the one that, would, that might have gone to Inception. And I think it just comes down to popularity. In the director's branch, who is more liked by other directors? And the Coens are, you know, they know how to work the room. Which, which, which is funny when you say that, because you've you got to figure that Nolan has opened up the door for, uh, for directors to take on these, these, these tentpole films and not screw them up. But... The director's branch is also very chummy. It's very much like the composer, like the music branch. People know each other, okay? If you're not sort of in the inner circle, you stand less of a chance of getting nominated because your friends aren't nominating you. And Nolan is kind of a very aloof guy. You know, so he is maybe, a loof guy. So maybe he doesn't work the room. Maybe and he's the, British. You know, maybe the, maybe the Coens, uh, they go to the parties and they go to the right... Uh, you know the right clubs and well, do the thing. I don't well, know. The, with, with, with the Collins, there's no there's no argument just to to say no, that. The no, no, it's, it's a very confident film. Not great, but very confident. So, uh, so that's the yeah. big controversy of the year. It seems why was Nolan not nominated for best director? And I think we can just sum it up by saying that the movie is terrific. But again, it is a complete, huge budget technical achievement that is not character based. Absolutely, that confused a lot of people. And it's again, the, the, the director's job also is to, is to, is to uh, create the story yes. and drive the performances so that people aren't confused for the sake of being confused. And a lot of people were. I like the film a lot. There a lot have of people been were. times when people couldn't understand why James Cameron or Steven Spielberg weren't nominated. Same difference. You've got you to make your Schindler's List. You've got to go find your, find your grail. And, and someday, if Nolan does find that script that yeah. isn't sci-fi based yeah. and tells a very powerful character based story. I don't know that he really has I mean, that people, in him necessarily. He's not that feel, kind of a director. He's not a character director people necessarily. Feel, people feel like he he makes movies where the screenplay is like a like a giant Sudoku puzzle or a, or a Rubik's cube and the whole point is just the puzzle and just solving it and there's no emotional investment, you know. And that's not 
that's that's a different kind of a thing. And it, they want him to move beyond that. They want him to be a guy who doesn't just make puzzle movies that, that are thrill rides and you have to figure out. Make us, tell us a story. Make us feel. Make us feel. Make us feel. You know? Make us feel. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right, so Wade, uh, so we have, we have 10 nominees for Best Picture, Wade. Yes. Uh, oh, man, here we go. Read them in alphabetical order. No. Go. Read them in reverse alphabetical order divided by pi. Oh, here we go. Black Swan, The Fighter. Inception, The Kids Are All Right, The King's Speech, 127 Hours, The Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. Okay, so this is uh, obviously the, uh, the, the, uh, the two-movie race between 127 hours yeah. and uh, Winter's Bone. Yes, that's it. <laughs> no. Okay. It's the King's Speech and uh, uh, the Social Network. Yes. That's, that's the, the horse race. That's and it. every year there is a horse race, and that's, that's the one this year. Now, there's something else interesting here that I wanted to point out uh, that is really significant. We, we've mocked the idea of the 10 nominees before. It's like, oh, great. They're doing it just for, you know, so there's more films nominated and there's more people who watch the show and it's all about ratings. But something interesting happened last year. When you open up the 10 nominees, you didn't just get an animated film in there. You got two films directed by women. Never before happened, okay? Uh, eventual winner, obviously, the, uh, the Hurt Locker. But you also had an education. This year, once again, two films directed by women. Now, proportionally, not enough. Not enough women are directing films. But The Kids Are All Right and Winner's Bone, both very good films. As we said before, women who worked on their own scripts went through hell raising money to make these movies. I mean, these movies almost didn't get made, these two films. They were made for no money, and it was hard as hell to raise it. And this validates their auteurship. These are not studio filmmakers. All the rest of these people are studio filmmakers, by, the, by and large. Those two, with Aronofsky not so much, but those two, Lisa Cholodenko and Deborah Granick, are the ones who fought to get their movies made, and they are the ones who are reaping the, the greatest rewards here. Well, I think also at, uh, last year, which was the first year of the 10 nominees, and this year too, you, you do get, although I still hate the 10 nominee thing, yeah. you do get a decent cross-section of studio and independent films. Yeah. Now, of course, if you had 50 uh, nominated films, then you'd get uh, everything would be nominated, and we could say, oh, two women, and five guys, and three this, and, and four that. And the show would be 27 hours long. And the long. show would be 27 hours long. 27 hours long. Maybe. Oh, I don't get it. Um, so, here's the thing. Uh, uh, the Fighter does, does not have a chance. Uh, Inception doesn't have a chance. Kids Are Right doesn't have a chance. Winner's Bone doesn't have a chance. Toy Story Wait, 3 is going to win Best yet. Animated. Well, here's the thing. not the prediction. No, show. no. We're, well, we're, it's, it's a horse race between King's yeah, Speech really and, uh, and, and... And you'll uh, give us an network. answer on our prediction show. But what's interesting about this, the horse race, uh, th this is what I find fascinating. This is why the dynamics of predicting these things are just all over the map. Because uh, the social network got all the buzz. It, uh, it came out and it just kind of went away. Everybody said, wow, that peaked early. I guess that film's done. Stick a fork in it. And then uh, the King's Speech... Got, it won the Audience Award at Toronto, which was the same award that uh, Slumdog Millionaire won. And I was like, oh my gosh, King's Speech. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it's great. And I saw it at Telluride, and it's just the buzz gets swelling and swelling, and suddenly it's the King's Speech. And then every critics group, including the Golden Globes, gave their award to the social network. And suddenly the social network is back on the map, and it's the unbeatable king. It's the lion. Oh my gosh. It's, gonna, it, it's, up, it's resurrected from the dead. It's a phoenix. It's Jesus. It, here it comes. And then... All of a sudden, the Producers Guild Awards, surprise, the King's Speech wins. And then the King's Speech gets all the BAFTA nominations, and now it gets the most Oscar nominations, and now it's right back in the mix. And everyone's talking the King's Speech. And, and so now, it's a real horse race. So now it becomes, how do, you, how do you think the Academy will vote? It's not like Crash, where you've got all the actors true. rallying around an ensemble movie. You know, you, what you're going to get is you're going to get the younger voters voting for Social Network. Yep. You'll get the older owner, uh, owners. You'll get, you'll get the older uh, voters uh, voting for King's Speech. And both films are about communication. It's beautiful. Thank you. I brought it <laughs> together. I found a theme. I found a theme. So what has to happen... I tied it up with a little bow. So what has to happen is that all of the uh, younger members of the Academy need to murder... <laughs> the older members of the Academy between now and when they have to have their ballots submitted. <coughs> you think that's going to happen? Um, Is that possible? I thought this wasn't yeah, a prediction show. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Mm -hmm. No, but it's, it, this is a real generational it is a vote. Huge, it is. It is. I mean, can you really see, like, like you know, some 85-year-old guy voting for social network? If he's on Facebook. Depends Although on how many I'll, friends he has. I'll, I'll say this. I... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I can see possibly uh, middle aged, younger to middle aged voters voting for King's Speech. Because, I mean, yes. it, it is a good movie. It's a terrific movie. But I movie. think that Social Network is such, a, is such a product of its time and generation that nobody over 50 is going to vote for that film unless you love David Fincher or whatever. True. I mean, I, I think Social Network has things about it that don't quite work. There are moments that I, where I kind of went, that's odd. Um, but you know what? A lot of other people disagree. It's a total generational thing, and it's going to depend entirely on uh, what component of the Academy comes out to vote. It's a get-out-the-vote thing. Red state, blue state, baby. That is right. All right, so, uh, so there you have uh, all the nominees. Now, uh, there's a couple of, uh, I have to say, Yes, sir. Snub-wise, very surprised at a couple of the snubs in the best documentary category. I, yes. Well, I'm surprised by one, not surprised by the other. I'm going to say should what we, I'm... Uh, should we read the, uh, the nominations? Oh, uh, Wade's going to refer to his little sheet. Yes. Go, no, Wade. What were the nominees the, uh, for, for Best Documentary? For, for Best Documentary. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, oh, we're down for an hour. We're down for an hour. Yes, we don't we have a documentary card. No, I know we, we don't. We don't have a documentary hey, card. We, we told Mike, we said, look, we may we want don't. to talk about other stuff. Nope. And, and, and cards, Mike said, you're yes. like, that's all we need. Documentary, documentary. And by the way, can I just say this as, 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 as Wade tries to find the best documentary uh, nominee, uh, yes. nominees. All the, all the graphics in this show, this was put together, by the way, like today. Yes, it was. Okay. Corey, mm -hmm. Corey, not Corey the and the crew putting it together. Beautiful. All the names and everything is spelled Brilliant. right. All the uh, posters are there. Everything was great. And don't forget, it's not like they had five days to work on this stuff. No, the, no. Nominees, the nominations were announced this morning. We just we just show up like hamsters and we run them on a little wheel. <laughs> you know what? We're just, the, we're just the host monkeys. That's we it. We sit here as this the host is, monkeys. The work is done over here and to a brave degree. And we just Bravo. try not to screw it up. Thank you. All right, so... Uh, um, so here are the nominees. Yes. Uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop, Banksy, which was a big Sundance thing last year. Uh, Gasland, which I think was about you after dinner. <laughs> it's true. Um, Inside Job, which is sort of also about him after dinner. Uh, Restrepo, which, which is... is also about him after dinner. But he's sick with strep. <laughs> And uh, oh. and wasteland, which is also after he the, the inside and the thing it all comes together, bam! Okay. Something, something's missing. Seems like something's missing. Well, here's what's place. missing. We we actually both said, "Oh, Tillman's story's got it locked up." Yeah. Oh, I love Tillman's story. How is that not? I don't know. Nominated. I honestly don't know. It's just good. Well, somebody it, has to be number six. I, so yeah. now you're going to fight finally? Well, here's what I think. I think Restrepo, I think when it comes down to, to war films, I think Restrepo uh, is the film that bumped it out. Um, and Restrepo's a terrific movie. Restrepo's it's, it's a very great. good film. The I, access he got was unprecedented. Or was it, it an inside job in the government? Now, here's the thing. No, now, I think Restrepo just... Restrepo just it must have hit the chord and when people... you know, they, Again, documentary is a very, very inside group. It's like the foreign language category it's 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 nominated by committee so it's not the branch it's committee and it's a you know the, this is one that has been notorious in the past with all kinds of accusations of cronyism and uh, you know all yeah, really weird politicking and uh, the weird part is is that so many documentary directors are are, are clearly liberal Yes. Right. The Michael Moores and all yes. these, and Charles Ferguson's and all these guys. So you would think that they would rally around the Tillman story. You would think. But somehow they didn't. I cannot didn't. explain that. I <laughs> can't either. But the, what I what I am not surprised by is that uh, Waiting for Superman That's did right. not make it. Davis Guggenheim, who won for An Inconvenient Truth, is not nominated for his follow-up film precisely because I think he went after. I think they feel like he's a turncoat. That he went suddenly in, made a movie not just about education problems, but he specifically went after teachers' unions, which are kind of a liberal sacred cow. And I think a lot of people feel like, wow, this guy's a turncoat. Rather than get on, on board with him and go, he's right, you know, the teachers' unions are a problem, I think a lot of people simply felt like he, he, we've lost him. He's betrayed us. And, and I think, and too, they didn't nominate him. I think people thought that there were some uh, factual issues with that film, too. And I'll say uh, the thing with Inside Job is that. Uh, I thought Inside Job was fine, but it's part of this new trend in documentaries that I'm getting a little tired of, which is sort of these, like Client yeah. Nine and Casino Jack, these talking head documentaries yeah. that sort of take you through a very specific time in history. And I like Client Nine, but you're getting a lot of those now. And Errol yeah. Morris does those really well. But a lot of these True. other guys do it fine. And I think that uh, I'm surprised that Inside Job got nominated, and I'm surprised that it got nominated over something like Client Nine or even Casino Jack, very of its moment oh, sort yeah. of movies. True. You know? True. Uh, but I think my tolerance for those sorts of documentaries, I think those are like, when, as opposed to, look, 
Client 9, Casino Jack, uh, Inside Job, basically there, it's a bunch of information gathering and talking heads and well, explaining of history. But With also, Strepo, you get a guy yeah. who embeds himself with these troops, tells an amazing, and even Tillman's story. It's just, these are great films. You know, there, there, there are three figures here who are sort of legendary. Sebastian Younger, Restrepo, uh, Charles Ferguson, Inside Job, and Banksy with Exit Through the Gift Shop, who's a, you know, an artist. So, um, some kind of artist. I, 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 look, I, I, I think, can I say something? I think those are the, that, that's kind of the race right now, is which one of those figures is going to be the, uh, the defining factor. Well, I think that Exit to the Gift Shop, which is probably my favorite documentary of the year, I think that uh, uh, it's, it's way too hip. Banksy and uh, graffiti tagging, it's way too hip. I think that's like, that, that's like, like uh, outer space. It got hip. nominated. It did, and it should have been. And frankly, I hope it wins. I don't think it will. But, um, and by the way, gr uh, graffiti taggers, death penalty. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, come on. Seriously, who's going to email? Gonna, oh, no, graffiti taggers. Oh, they're, they're artists. No, they're not. So you will always say no. Huh? ACLU will come out. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Well, then you know what? I'm not going to join the ACLU. A lot of, lot of great artists started as graffiti taggers, though. The guys on the freeways who write uh, B13. <laughs> Bastiat. Somebody tag your place. Huh? Somebody tag your car or something? No, no. they okay. will now, but nobody tagged it. <laughs> Bastiat. Huh? Bastiat started as a graffiti artist. And you know what? And now he's dead. Thank God he's not tagging uh, anymore. Wow. <laughs> All right. So here's the, here's the situation. Thank you. <laughs> My, between my Ebert comment last week and that one, man, we are we're making friends here. <laughs> oh, no, we added that out. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, we did. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that was a nomination special. I think, yes. on balance, this was a fair year. The snubs were not super egregious. It's, it, it, I mean, it's, look, we can all sort of go, why wasn't that person there and so forth, but it's not, it's, it's a case, w very often when, the, when we say there's a snub, the reason we say it is, is not because of us, the person who's not there. It's because there's someone else there, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and you can't believe it. You just go, how did that person get in and not this person? But this year, I go, well, there are a lot of people that could have been there, maybe should have been there, but when I look at the ones who are there, it's sort of, it's a predictable group. Uh, so I'm not surprised. So there's nothing where I feel like some idiot moron just got in there undeservedly. Uh, they're all, even, even the ones that I don't care for, they're the ones that I expected. Got it. So, all right. So, this is the nomination special. Now, we're going to have our Oscar show. Predictions. Predictions. That you at home will join in. Yes. And predict. In a few weeks. TBD. Now, the reason is, I mean, you talked a little bit. You were saying you can't really predict them this early on. Well, it's like, it's like a presidential election. You know, there is a dynamic that goes almost right down to the wire. And, you, you know, the Oscar voters have only just gotten their ballots. You know, so, I mean, not even yet. I mean, the nominations come out today, so they'll get their ballots probably in about a week. And then they start talking to their friends, making phone calls, and, the, you know, the ads run, the commercials run, and... Uh, their maids know, start watching the screeners and, then and people talking start about the hiring vote publicists. Wow. People start hiring publicists to plant nasty stories about other films. I mean, remember, back in 1989, everyone thought that Mississippi Burning was a lock for Best Picture. Until suddenly, it started getting all kinds of bad, bad, uh, bad press for uh, historical inaccuracies and whatnot. And Rain Man came s right out of the back of the pack and won. And that, by the and way, that was, was a last-minute dynamic. But that was also pre-internet. That was pre-internet. So now, if you want to go to Deadline.com and read yeah. all the planted stories that Nikki Fink is going to wind up uh, running yeah. because, uh, you know, she loves the access. And it gets nasty. I mean, it people does. will plant stories to try and derail other films. I mean, it's, it's going to get nasty. It's going to be just as nasty as a, as a political election. So I don't think we're going to have any real sense of who the front runners are, probably for at least two weeks. So there you go, folks. So let us know what you think on, on mm -hmm. the Facebook page, on the uh, Twitter thing, on the uh, Skype thing. Yeah. Mike, what other things do we have? I don't know. That's dig. it. I'm, I'm looking for more. Yeah, dig. Dig. Dig, dig. dig. By the way, the buy, rent, or burn on the dig has been fantastic. So please, oh, yeah. keep uh, keep digging us. Keep uh, uh, keep voting for your favorite buy, rent, or burns on dig, and those are the ones that we will discuss on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. In the meantime, we will have an Oscar prediction show and a, and a date TBD. Please check uh, the Facebook page for that, and uh, we'll see you next time, folks. Thanks. Woo!